Premiere, it's something new. It's not just the VR shit we saw before. 16 years after he left. Oh, it's a DLC of what happened it's after. Right. It's all right. You play as Rose, maybe? It's a DLC, I think. I think What's you play as Rose. Rose gets reached. Oh shit! You play as Rose! That was her inside of uh, the castle, D castle. What's going on? Leap. Wait. What? Oh no, they're turning this into a, a shady side of me kind of puzzler or what? Just like me. She has no weapons. Well, she has a gun, yeah. What the? What? The Duke? The Duke is a fan of the opera? Shadows of Ro- Wow, I'm, I'm so intrigued but so confused at the same time. It's Lady D's castle. It's tough. Marking the target. Wait, but no. you play as the four lords? Ah, oh, okay. So yeah, you play as the four lords, and you play as Chris too. What is that Shadows of Rose thing, though? It looks like it's a puzzle, puzzling type of experience. He returns in third-person mode. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I I'm glad it's there. But, like, it seems to contradict all the PSVR stuff, yeah? But what what is that Shadows of Rose mode, though? It's, it's sort of like Shady Side of Me, where, like, her thoughts or something are being, like, scribbled in... Includes three major in words or something? They basically, they already had this, I bet you. All they did was just like <laughs> zoom the camera out. And animations too, as well as additional playable characters, such as Chris Redfield and Heisenberg. Of course, Lady Dimitrescu will be there too. Ah, uh, they, they sort of fused the mercenaries mode with, um, not re a resistance, RE3 remake resistance, where you play as, uh, you play as the nemesis or something, or you play as the... An additional story, Shadows of Rose. Today, he plays the villain. Just a bit of this story. Yeah, what, what, what the hell is this? Rose, the beloved daughter of the main protagonist Ethan, is now a grown-up main character in this new story mode. In this sequel to the main story of Village, you can experience Rose's struggles with the terrifying Who's this powers guy? she was born with. To break free of the curse of her powers, she enters the consciousness of the Mega Mycete. She enters there, the she consciousness? Who looks just like her. In this mysterious realm of consciousness, time and space are they doing some evil within stuff? Rose is guided by a being who calls himself Michael, who might be of assistance with removing her powers. Oh, you know Shadows what? There was. Is set completely in a there was a DLC percent. for Evil Within where you played as Kidman. You won't only and like the, um, features, but the world Oh shit, she has guns too. To be attacking you. Oh, okay. The horror of the world itself being your greatest enemy. Yeah, when you play this Kidman, the, um, the Slender Man kind of FBI guy is communicating to you through powers. the void or something. Or through the machine. I wonder if it's going to be sort of like that. The DLC for Resident Evil Village Winter's Expansion includes all three of these major additions. Hmm. In addition, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, a bundle of Winter's Expansion with the base game, will be released. I mean, I think it's a cool set of stuff that they're releasing. It looks like a sol it's a solid update. Also begin service on the same date, October 28, 2020. <laughs> fighting a hunter. We are working on making the main story of Village available on Mac. What the hell was this? Now it's suddenly available on a Macintosh? Of all platforms? In addition, 
the main story of Village is planned to be playable on PlayStation VR This is so confusing. Like, I'm glad that they're putting all this stuff in here, but it's almost like they're trying out every gimmick and including it. So look forward to future announcements. You know, like the third person Ethan mode and then the PSVR mode, like just a few days ago. A few days ago? Okay, okay, okay. We know what this is. We know this beat. Okay, let me see some UI. Let me see some Ashley UI. Let me see some Lewis UI. I want to show me a freaking gr chicken with a golden egg. I want to see Leon killing some Ganados with a golden egg. Nothing new here. Uh, as far as the silhouette, but. You're not gonna just show the same shit, are you? No? Under one to roosts. Okay, this we all saw before. Show me some QTEs with Krauser, man. This we saw. This we saw. Literally the same trailer? I initially thought that was Ada, but it's actually Ashley. Leon is supposed to be kicking down doors, not opening them slowly. You a long way from home, cowboy. Psychic powers. <laughs> this is the same same trailer. It begins now. Sadler looking saddling. Um, so what was new? Ahí está. Matanos. If I could just forget what happened that night. Uh, oh, sli slightly different angle. Pain. Even for a second. Of Leon in the car. This time. Still no UI though. Different. Uh, okay. This is a little bit different. What the hell is it he? Has to. This is inside the main center of the village. Oh, come on. That's it. That's that's it. They they gave you like literally one Hi, extra. I'm Yasuhiro Anpo, director of Resident Evil Four, and I'm Yoshiaki Hirabayashi, producer okay, maybe, of maybe. Resident Evil Four. This title is a reimagining of Resident Evil Four, based on the original 2005 release. Similar to other titles in the series, we are carefully preserving what makes the original okay. title special, while updating it with modern. Yeah, they're doing exactly what I think. When it launches in I think they're going to be doing, and it's going to cause. We'll some divisions a the game in a couple key places. Ashley's going to be the big Resident one. Evil 4 is um, set six years after the events in Raccoon City, depicted in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. Okay. The main character of the game, Leon S. Kennedy, survived the Raccoon City incident and was assigned as an agent directly under the President of the United States. Okay, we know this. Leon is dispatched to a quiet village in Europe as part of a mission to rescue the kidnapped daughter of the President. You might notice Leon is much more mature and fearless due to his past experiences. But will he be terrified is the thing. The Still. Ganado, the main enemies of this game wait for him. Ooh, they're more beauty. The experience of being attacked by hordes of crazed Ganado is truly an iconic moment from Resident Evil. I think they're already sixing this thing. I think it's more or less confirmed. The way that they're doing the environments and shit. People controlled by madness. The Ganado have been completely redesigned. Yeah, you notice how they're they're more Let's designed to be like like the lichens in RE Village. Ooh. Oh, oh shit. Hammer returns, of course. Oh, there's a, there's a yeah, I, I know it. There's um there's a typewriter over here. And dangerous force. Oh my god, you man. Nail the feeling of loneliness and fear of not knowing what Oh lies my ahead, okay. Even more so than the original. Of course. I see what they're doing. This is a This battle. is a good good direction they're going in. People that played the recent Resident Evil 2 and Resident Leon Evil 3 should find this familiar. Look forward to future announcements where we'll have more information on That's the, the first house. Resident That's Evil the first house that you developed for PlayStation 5. Where you show the Ganado the picture of Ashley Pass and PC. The release date will be March 24th, 2023. 
the bolt cutters? <laughs> Are we using the We're same bolt cutters? Maybe. Evil four that everyone can enjoy. So please look forward to it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. I think they learned a lot from. I think the what they did with RE seven may have had like a rippling effect across like its future games. So the transition from RE six to RE seven was a key pivotal moment for Capcom. Prag. Mata? Oh. Uh, it's a package for RE7 with 2 and 3 remake. Yeah. You can't see because it's so dark, but the atmosphere is everything. That's the key thing. Um, a lot of people don't know that Resident Evil 6 was one of the best-selling Resident Evil games. So, Capcom actually had no... Not necessarily any financial incentive for going the direction they went in with RE7, but now that they did, I think they realized that the atmosphere, not necessarily the scare factor, but the atmosphere is such a huge thing in the, the Resident Evil feel, the look and feel. And so I'm glad they're going in that same direction with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Yeah, we still have no idea how the gameplay is going to be necessarily, like the attaché case or the upgrading with the weapons, like how the merchant is. RE7 was a starting point where Capcom started to straighten themselves Resident Evil out. 7, which brought the I'm not sure what you mean by straighten themselves out, but they certainly found something that works far better than they expected. Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. These three titles Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6 sold a lot, so they could have just as well went in that direction, and who knows, maybe they would have been just as financially successful. Um, but I'm glad that they discovered that, yes, the visual, the atmosphere, and the sound design is very important to the Resident Evil experience. Resident Evil 8 was a weird kind of thing, where they went more of the, the action route. The and then it seems like they're just throwing delivered. all the gimmicks at it, which I'm not necessarily For against. Users, an update patch will be available on the same day. But I think that more or less confirms what I thought. I think they're re 6 Resident Evil 4. It's still going to be action. I think it's still action. It's still action and fast paced because that's the that's actually what made Resident Evil 4 so so different, you know? That's all for today's announcements. Yeah, and unfortunately, we didn't get anything more of the gameplay. We didn't even get any UI, actually. But where was it here? I want to uh, just highlight something here. This is the beginning of uh, right when the police officers drop you off. Like, here's the little shack with the first typewriter. There's the warning sign. There's um there's a crow usually on here where you can shoot it and it gives you a grenade or something. The dog is right over here trapped inside of a bear trap. Right before this was where the first house was. But look at this. Like in Resident Evil 4 original, this was all super bright. Now this could be at night. And yeah, at night in Resident Evil 4 original, it was yeah, I guess a little bit scary, you know, but it wasn't like this. You didn't have, you never got a feeling of isolation or anxiety in that game. For the shoulder camera returns, you know? of course. Yeah, and they see Leon isn't running, although he could just be walking, but Leon, when he walks in Resident Evil 4, he's, he's like holding his gun, and then he's... I wouldn't say he's walking, it's more like kind of power walking or something. Here it seems like he's creeping. You know, he's actually like taking it slow and being aware of his, back, his uh, surroundings. That was the one thing I did not necessarily like about Resident Evil 4, was that since Leon wasn't really scared anymore, he had no reason to be... The game itself wasn't scary. That's not a bad thing, but it did feel distinctively different from what I kind of expected from Resident Evil. But it did take it in a good direction, uh, making it more action horror as opposed to survival horror. So, one thing that I'm I'm somewhat curious about, if they're going to make this more moody and atmospheric, I wonder if that means that the puzzles are going to be more involved. Because solving the puzzles... Like, the puzzling stuff was where the atmosphere really shined, you know? Because the action action and atmosphere, like, fast-paced action and atmosphere don't always kind of jive together. But the puzzling did, because the puzzling was where you had to take everything slow. And that was where you got a lot of your jump scares. So they had, like, like all the crows and shit. Like, the crows actually look menacing. 
Will you still get drops, item drops from shooting the crows? We want to nail the feeling of loneliness and fear. Yeah, nailing the the feeling of loneliness and fear, not knowing what lies ahead. So if you play the original, you will know what lies ahead because you played the original. But they're reimagining this. Um, it was only dark and rainy when you got to the yeah after you got the um, after you picked up Ashley, then the the chapter transitions and it gets all rainy and dark. Um, and I guess the Las Plagas that emerged after you like headshot one of the Ganados or something, that added to another fear element and the Comillos and stuff. But I don't know if I I was ever afraid of the enemies in that game in the way that I was somewhat afraid of certain enemies or certain encounters in Resident Evil 6, at least Leon's campaign. The puzzles were where it shined, especially figuring out the bosses. Uh, but Resident Evil 4, though, didn't have much puzzling it was there, but I don't think the puzzles were were meant to be that involved at all. Like, where Resident Evil 4 shined the most was in the action. And the puzzling was secondary. Which was kind of weird with Resident Evil Village, because RE Village sort of tried to model itself after Resident Evil 4. Like, the, the opening setup with the lichens was, like, literally one for one. But, unlike Leon... Ethan was not designed to be an action kind of character. In fact, he's not even meant to be much of a, an evasion kind of character. He seems to be more designed to be an exploration character, which is why all the stuff in the castle was so so fun. You know, just exploring stuff and doing the Resident Evil type of puzzling, like opening shelves and stuff and discovering items and ammunition and stuff. That was way more fun, right? Which is the opposite of Resident Evil 4 even though it tried to become more like Resident Evil 4. So I wonder how much of the action they're going to potentially sacrifice from this in order to make the atmosphere stuff pop out more. The cheesiness stuff is obviously going to go away, and I suspect this is going to be the big point of contention with all the fans. They're going to reimagine it, but they're, they're going to try to preserve it. So, almost guaranteed, Ashley's going to change in a very big way. Krauser is going to change in a very big way, and Lewis, I'm guessing, is going to change in a very big way, but in a way that we don't expect. The stuff with Leon is going to... Leon's going to change, for sure, from what he was in Resident Evil 4, and Ada will as well, but I think those will be more acceptable changes. Just because we've come to know them over the years, we've had updates of Leon and Ada over the years, but actually we've seen nothing of her for 15-something years. And she's not going to be this goofy, this goofy damsel in distress, almost comically tropey damsel in distress anymore. They're going to do something with her that's new, but they're going to have to keep her the same, if that makes any sense. I only hope that they make Leon actually terrified of his environment and the enemies, you know. And that was the reason why I wanted Rebecca in a Resident Evil game so much is because the Resident Evil games where atmosphere was always the big thing, was always my thing. It didn't have to necessarily be just puzzling. It could just be like more action, but the atmosphere and the scare factor, whether it was in puzzling or in action, was really more my thing. And Rebecca seemed like the last of all the Resident Evil mainline characters that had that potential, because she's naturally defenseless by nature. And so if you put her in a situation where she was forced to defend herself and actually pick up a gun and fight, right? Because Claire, Claire of all the the mainline characters didn't become a superhero, that's true. And um, she's like one step above a civilian, but she's never actually given up her gun, per se. She's just kind of gotten on in her life. But Rebecca is more effective because she has deliberately, intentionally given up her gun. She's intentionally made herself defenseless. Leon already looks different in this game, looks serious. Um, he looks battle-worn and scarred. Cars are hiding pieces, you need to get the medallion. That's that's true, but that was more... That wasn't like you were you were going to a completely different location, having to fight a bunch of enemies and then getting the medallion and then having to backtrack and then doing a bunch of stuff. Krauser's fight was more like... It was an action sequence, you just had to do it in stages, where each stage netted you a piece of a medallion that opened it up. It was different. That's not... That's like more of a Resident Evil 4 kind of puzzle, I would expect. You know? 
there's a puzzle, like a door you have to open and you need a key. It isn't something like it was in Resident Evil 2 Remake where you got it during the first hour or something and then you don't use it until the seventh hour. It's more or less you find it and then your next objective is to use it. Yeah, they're making this spooky as hell. Or it could just be during the nighttime. Your thing is that Wesker is already in game. Yeah, I wonder how they'll, they'll use him too. We haven't seen much of Wesker actually. That's true. We haven't seen much of Wesker in the past 15 years. Unless you want to count like the Resident Evil movie. <laughs> Where he's been reimagined in so many different ways. Thrilling battles. Okay. Leon has never met Wesker. This thing right here. That's a mechan That's straight out of Resident Evil 7, by the way. The wires. The, the wires and having to duck under it. What Leon reminds me of. He reminds me of, of Chris in Resident Evil 6. He's at that junction where he's become jaded. He's become a drunk and a womanizer. <laughs> Rose meets another version of herself. Yeah, they're doing some evil within shit here. Uh, yeah, see, she's... It's some, it's some hallucination thing. She's going into that machine like it did with Evil Within. And so she's going into like a, an imaginary world inside of her own mind. But if she dies in her mind, she dies in real life. That's the main hallway where you have to solve, you have to get the four masks. To the left is, is the room with the Duke. Up, up here is the main <clears throat> dining room with the giant chandelier. To the right is where Ethan was held captive. Straight ahead is where you fight the Lady D boss. So she's actually here. Resident Evil can finally do things they don't have to worry about, like explaining ghosts. We haven't yet encountered the realm of ghosts. Evil Within was not ghosts. It was more like psychological body horror kind of stuff. But we haven't yet come across ghosts. We've come across ghost-like things. The explanation with Lady D's daughters, they're made up of flies, but then they can disembody themselves and turn into a swarm of locusts. That's supernatural. What the hell is this? This is not Resident evil at all. <laughs> um, she's either hallucinating something or they're doing some Evil Within shit for sure here. This is like Evil Within but mixed with some elements of Shady Side of Me. Where the narration or something is actually written out in words, <laughs> you know? Was that in Evil Within? Yeah. Go while you can. Eh, yeah. So she's got some unresolved psychological issues. You know, it's unfortunate that I actually thought that where they're going to go with Rose was they're going to make Chris more of a surrogate father type of role. That, in a sense, serves Chris's arc as well. You know, they're, they're going to make Chris more like Barry, where he has something personal at stake. But they're not, I guess, maybe later in the future, but not right now. But she did have a gun. We saw her with a gun. And this is inside the dungeon, but there's a bunch of mold here. Like, what the hell? There's a bunch of mold, so... This is another version of her? Maybe she's a mold as well? It's not Silent Hill. Like, her thoughts are being written out as words. It seems so kind of kiddish horror. They said 16 years after RE8's conclusion, surprised... Thought Rose was only like four or five due to advanced aging. I'm not sure how they're going to explain all the the lore in the world just yet. Hey. But they say that she has some kind of power. So it's, there's her with a gun. That might be Ethan's gun, actually. No, it doesn't have all the tape around it. But that's his, is, that is uh, Ethan's jacket. I think that might be Chris's hat. And she has powers. So some kind of of psychokinetic powers, a la Eve. How would that translate into gameplay, though, is a thing. Yeah, they're they're stressing the next generation engine with the strands of hair and everything. Oh, now, now we have a new the router to peruse. What the hell is this? The 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 Duke has become the Phantom of the Opera. He can summon molded or something. It's kind of goofy. It'll probably be scary in the same way that Resident Evil Village is scary. Like some weird enemies that just shock and freak you out. He's is that Mother Miranda's mask? What the fuck? Is he? And he's summoning molded enemies. 
This is inside the main hallway too. I have no idea what to think of this. It's a huge psychological thing. She's fighting her mind. I wonder if Beneviento has anything to do with it then, huh? Well, there's that, I guess. They realized that Resident Evil 7 was a huge commercial success, far more than they had realized. And so they were trying to capitalize on it as much as possible. And so they're just throwing everything at it. They're like studioizing the, the fear, you know, of Resident Evil Village. Yeah, I think they're just throwing everything at it. Just everything at this game. There's the laser scope, and it hits him. He has, he can summon, looks like Heisenberg can summon, summon his, uh, his mechanical monstrosities and use his hammer. Uh, Lady D, she's tall as fuck. She can grab stuff and throw it at you. And she can smash you to the ground as a finishing move. Ethan was a weird character for Resident Evil Village, gameplay-wise. He clearly wasn't designed to be an action character, but he wasn't designed as a stealth character either. He didn't have a lot of maneuvers that allowed him to evade enemies. His sprint sucks as hell. So, I'm not sure what they were trying to do. I'm only hoping that Resident Evil 4 Remake will make Leon congruent with the gameplay. His, his gameplay is congruent with his character, and that's the best, I think that's probably the best thing you can hope for. Rebecca being congruent with her gameplay would be um, a very survival -y horror type of Resident Evil experience. Leon being congruent with his gameplay, I can see it going back to Resident Evil 6, but then like improving on a lot of the atmosphere and maybe some of the gameplay as well. But I still think that 4 Remake is going to be segmented. It's not going to be fully explorable. And the puzzling will be moderate still compared to the action.